and Luigi Minkilo. Hello everyone, Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy here at ringside. It is 85 degrees, uh, certainly headed into the 90s here as we are at midday, 1.30 in Las Vegas. And Gil, you and I had a chance to see Luigi Minkilo in the fight we did a few weeks back from Via Reggio, Italy. He won an easy two-round knockout over Danny Myers of the U.S. We also watched him in a 12-round videotape victory winning the European Championship. What were your impressions? Well, after watching him fight and, and also watching him train here in La Las Vegas, my impression is that he's a well-conditioned, strong, awkward fighter, throws a lot of punches, but he doesn't have the ring smarts or the punching power of Roberto Duran. Well, his manager, Giovanni Branchini, says that uh, while he realizes his fighter is not the favorite, he describes Minkilo as brave and strong, and he says that most importantly, his fighter thinks he can win. Does that add up to a certain length of time he figures to last in here, or does he indeed have a chance to win? Well, Tim, any time a fighter is well-conditioned and believes in himself, anything can happen in a boxing ring. Well, Minkilo, a virtual unknown. Not certainly the case for Roberto Duran. Duran with a continuing, fascinated following by all of the boxing world because they're watching very closely his comeback attempt. He has Wilfred Benitez ahead of him. He is the former lightweight and welterweight champion, winning that welterweight crown in June of 1980 with 15 rounds of grueling action against Sugar Ray Leonard in Montreal, the WBC welterweight championship. Then came the rematch in New Orleans in November of 1980, a different Leonard with different strategy, frustrating Duran, and even though the fight was still very much ahead of him, suddenly in the eighth round, that stunning moment when Roberto Duran signaled to the referee the now infamous Nomas Nomas, complaining of a stomach ailment, and then heading into retirement, it seemed. That's what he said the following day. Then the change of heart. After ballooning up to 190 pounds, he got himself back into shape to fight Nino Gonzalez at the 154-pound limit. And, Gil, we showed that fight here on CBS. What were your impressions as we see the 10th round action? Well, Gonzalez was a good fighter that made him hustle, but you could see that the long layoff was apparent. Also, I didn't think Roberto could carry that weight that well, but you see they were both still swinging at the end of that 10th round. Well, it was a decision for Duran. Indeed, some people thought Gonzalez won a very close fight, but... It was at least a good exercise for Duran in getting himself ready as he was ready to go to work once more after just eight days off. And indeed, he's now down to 154 pounds for this fight, looking much more trim, more sharp, better rhythm. He has looked good in the gym thus far, preparing for Luigi Minkilo. But his mind last week was very much on another boxer, as it has been constantly since that night in November of 1980. He was watching in Los Angeles as Sugar Ray Leonard defeated Thomas Hearns for the welterweight championship, the undisputed version thereof, last week right here on this same site in Las Vegas, Nevada. Indeed, the obsession continues for Roberto Duran. But he must get by Luigi Menkilo, the, well the European champion at 154 pounds, here this afternoon in Las Vegas as Roberto Duran now comes in from the sports pavilion just about 100 yards away from ringside here, and there is a large crowd over there awaiting the appearance of Roberto Duran. Duran coming in with his handlers. The bulk of the audience here has yet to see Duran, but he will be coming into full view of the crowd here momentarily. When he appeared in Cleveland for the fight against Nito Gonzalez, he was met with largely enthusiastic response. He was a tremendously popular lightweight champion, defending that crown 11 times. But since the infamous night against Sugar Ray Leonard, there's been a question. The boxing fans still love Roberto Duran. with a crowd of about 2,000 in the searing heat of Las Vegas, and he will be battling Luigi Minkilo when we return to Las Vegas after these words from your local station. Well, we're about ready to go here. Let's go to our ring announcer, Chuck Hull. Event of the afternoon. Ten rounds of boxing in the junior middleweight division. Introducing, in the red corner, fighting out of San Paolo, Italy, he is the European junior middleweight champion. He weighs 153 and three quarter pounds. Here is Luigi Minkilo. And in the blue corner, from Panama City, Panama, 
a former lightweight and welterweight champion of the world, weighing in at 154 pounds, the man with the hands of stone, Roberto Duran. Roberto Duran, who made the 154 pound okay. limit, he could have come in 155. Any questions? Still been uh, okay. acceptable in this fight. The Just referee is Mills Take Lane. Care. Very brief instructions, and we're ready to go with round one of this scheduled 10 rounder. Duran, 73, 2 and 0. He is 30 years of age, 55 knockouts. Luigi Minkilo, 33 and 1 with 20 knockouts. The record's according to Ring Magazine. He's 26 years of age from San Paolo di Cividate in southern Italy, province of Poggia. Now living in Pesaro, Italy. On the right of your screen, now circling to the left in the green trunks with white trim and Duran, bearded, also in green with gold trim. Typical Minkilo beginning, Timmy came right out throwing punches. He's an aggressive fighter. through to Duran. <laughs> Scoring here in Nevada by three judges at ringside. They are Hal Miller, Jerry Roth, and Dave Moretti, all from Las Vegas. The referee Mills Lane does not score. He is from Reno, Nevada. Another right hand landed from Minkilo. Come on, get him. We couldn't get much of a picture of him in his two round knockout over Danny Myers in Muncie, Indiana, over in Italy a few weeks back. We're watching him winning his European crown against Luis Arcarius. He showed that he had a lot of stamina. He was still throwing a lot of punches in the 12th round. But of course, his record, while distinguished in terms of number, 33 victories, only one defeat, a defeat that he later avenged to another Italian fighter. The record distinguished by the numbers, but not so much by the opponents. Tim fighting for the first time in the United States of America and fighting Roberto Duran. You think he might be a little cautious, a little hesitant in the beginning, but he's not. He's fighting exactly to win. I mean, Keo fights any fight, which is a good sign. I asked his manager, Giovanni Branchini, was he impressed, awed, excited about being in the United States for the first time and in the glamour city of Las Vegas? He said, no, not at all. He was thinking only about the fight. We're watching him around the casinos and Caesar's Palace Hotel here the past few days. Uh, indeed, he seems to be totally focused on the fight. Very relaxed. He throws a lot of punches, Tim, but they're mostly arm punches. And when Duran gets one, he gets all that leverage in it. That could be the big difference in the fight. Short right hand from Minkillo landed inside. It brought a return flurry from Duran, spinning Minkillo around. Less than a minute to go in round one. Duran with Wilfred Benitez ahead. pound crown, a good combination landed by Duran. He's planning another fight before meeting Benitez. Kilo is his hurdle here today. It's a rough first round, Tim. A rough first round. Less than 30 seconds to go in the round. And Kilo scored a short right hand from that clinch. Duran digs a good left to the body. Oh, good solid left hook to the chin of Minkilo. Kilo ties him up and appears to be all right as we're in the final seconds of this first round. Round number two, Roberto Duran on the left of your screen, Luigi Minkilo, the European champion from Italy, now on the left of your screen. Well, I noticed one thing between rounds, a much more organized Duran corner than he had against Gonzalez and Cleveland. Yes, that, that was a circus, but this is a much better corner. Tim, at the end of the first round, uh, Duran landed a tremendous left hook right on Minkillo's chin. Now, when he was a lightweight and he would hit a guy with that punch, the guy would go. It would be 10. But now he's hitting a guy that's 154 pounds, and the result isn't the same. Been a question, and indeed, you and Angelo Dundee raised it in the Gonzalez fight. Should he be at 147 or 154? What do you think? Well, I, as I say, I like 147 for Duran. He would have to discipline himself, bring himself down there, but I think that would be his best way. He's not this, he doesn't have that big a frame. He's in there with these real big guys now. Good combination landed by Duran. Kilo keeps coming forward as he has since the opening bell. We are early in round two. 
temperatures near 90 degrees, but cooler in the ring. It is shaded by a canopy, and there's a very noticeable difference, probably if it touches 10 to 12 degrees. The fighters are much more comfortable than the spectators, at least in terms of the temperature. The spectators aren't taking any punches. That Duran still has hands of gold, though, Tim. He can snap those punches off in combination beautifully. Even early in this fight, Gil, it seems he's showing better rhythm, more tempo than he was able to generate against the top. It looks like a much, much better fighter today, Tim. His punches are sharper and crisper and more accurate. And he's in with a rough, tough guy. This guy's not taking any back steps. He's taking those shots at Duran so far. A little busier around for Duran in terms of punches. He just landed a right hand, bringing it up from near the floor. But look, after the right hand, he threw two more punches. That's the difference between being a champion and an ordinary fighter. He puts it together beautifully. Under a minute to go, round two. Light up a scored again from Duran. That's what we pointed out to him. Duran has those ring smarts. People don't realize what a good boxer he is and how he can maneuver people around in a ring. He has all the skills. And Kilo dug a left to the body but missed with a wild left hook to the head on this combination. Nikio is good if you're right in front of him. If you move to the side, he has a little trouble. <laughs> Another combination of the head from Duran, but Minkillo came right back. Minkillo weighed 153 and three quarters, Duran 154, right on this super welterweight or junior middleweight limit. You see Duran spin him around that time, that's, that's the experience of the time. Later today on CBS Sports Saturday, Bray Musburger will have a feature on the upcoming championship fight between Arguello and Mancini. Gil and I will be there next week in Atlantic City. And we are looking forward to it with enormous anticipation. Two terrific gentlemen, two terrific fighters, exciting Boom Boom Mancini against one of the truly great champions, Alexis Arguello. Combination by Duran Lance here in round three. All right, now Duran is moving a little bit more, a little more maneuverable. And when he does that, that bothers me, Keo. When he uses his experience and his boxing ability. If I was in his corner, Tim, I'd never have him trading punches with this guy. But even though he could probably beat him that way, it's not necessary. He can faint this guy, move him out of position, and then nail him with those combinations. Well, indeed, just after he remarked on that, Mankilo used the distance that he got to land a good combination. He's taller with more reach. Well, Tim, he's taller, but as long as the ranch stays right in front of him, all he has to do is faint and move in either direction. Right or left, and then throw those punches. Left See, jab by Duran like Landis. It's much better. The other guy's a rough, tough, strong guy. He might be able to outbrawl anybody. We're on round three, scheduled for ten. Duran, of course, heavily favored to win against the fighter virtually unknown in this country, despite being the European champion and having lost only once. He didn't beat anybody that many people have ever heard of. Missing with that left hook, Minkilo. He has Minkilo backing up now, though, Tim. He has him backing up. Bill Blaine, the referee, trying to separate him from the third round. Right, sunny day in Las Vegas. They are on the tennis courts of Caesars Palace, the same location where Hearns and Leonard went at it. There's some blood now on the nose, the bridge of the nose of Duran. Let's see if we can get a better look to see whose it is and where it came from. Their heads have been very close together. Good left hand landed. There's a lot of blood over the left eye of Duran, Gil. Yes, there is. That head-to-head -head business inside, Tim, as I say, I don't think that was necessary for Duran. He's in with a brawler and he's brawling. A lot of blood and it appears to be Duran's. It is indeed. Slight blood from the nose of Minkilo. A minute to go, round three. And Kilo just landed a big right hand too, Tim. He has the rim busted up pretty good. Less than 30 seconds to go in the third round. Durant is cut in two places, Tim. Over the bridge of the nose and the corner of the eye. And Kilo coming forward. Ever since he saw that blood appear, probably came from a clash of heads, did not appear to come from a blow. Final seconds of round three. Round number four, a bad cut on the right eyelid. 
of Roberto Duran and Bill Prezant working on it feverishly in the corner. How well did they do, Gil? Tim, it's a serious cut. It's about an inch long, and it's underneath the eyebrow, which means it's in the eye socket. And when a fight is in a, in a spot like that, if it gets hit one more shot and it busts wide open, he'll have to stop the fight. It's in a very, very dangerous place. And Kilo is corner saying, Subito, Subito, now go after him. And it's Duran backing up in Kilo. Mikio cannot fight backing up, Timmy. He has to go forward. Anytime you see him backing up, you know he's in trouble. Duran digging a right underneath. Kilo just boring in, leading with his head. Now scoring a good combination inside. Tim, we said he was a rough, tough, strong guy, and that's what he is. Another big right hand by Mikio. Opportunity of a lifetime for Minkilo. He knows it, and he has been the confident one. I don't think you'd find anybody else in Las Vegas who thought he had a chance to win, including his own management. Perhaps his trainer, Elio Gelfi from Rimini. A smile from Duran. But he's got to know that that cut is serious. Well, Bill Present has done a good job on a cut, Tim. There's no blood coming out right now, but as I say, it's in a bad spot. I'd like to alert our stations along the line. There'll be a 30-second station break following this round. We're in round number four. Duran planning the third fight as a tune-up to meet Wilfred Benitez for the 154-pound crown, and he is in trouble early here against Minkilo because of the cut. Mikio loses everything, Tim. Head, elbows, shoulders. Under a minute to go. Round number four. Good uppercut from Duran. Despite the cut, Duran's got to know he's in a brawl here. Even if he weren't cut. This is no picnic for him. Good left of the body, two of them by Minkilo. That's 30 seconds to go in round four. This has to be the biggest, strongest fighter that Durant has ever fought. Yes, we must be constantly reminded that he was the lightweight champion for all those years. Moved up to welterweight to 147 for 135, and now up at 154. CBS Sports Saturday will be continuing after this one up coming from your local station. Round number five upcoming, Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy live from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Roberto Duran on the left of your screen. Luigi Minkilo, the European champion from Pesaro, Italy, now on the left of your screen. Panama Lewis, Nestor Quinones exhorting Roberto Duran in the corner immediately to our left. And Bill Prezant working on the cut did an excellent job between rounds three and four. No further damage was done during that fourth round. Tim, if Duran wins this fight, Bill Prezant has to get a big assist because that is, again, a dangerous cut, and it's a long cut in a bad spot. And not one drop of blood is coming out now. If you just joined us, it is on the right eyelid of Roberto Duran. It came evidently from a clash of heads in round three. Kilo is a fighter that can only fight in one gear, Tim. Anytime he tries to back up or try to think, then he's in trouble. But when he's marching forward and rolling, he's very, very effective. And grab him. Come on, let's go. Too, Tim. He keeps those elbows in, those hands high, and he moves pretty good inside. Well, when we watched him on tape against that Luis Arcaris, Arcaris did so little for so much of the fight, it was hard to get a good fix on him. The one thing he did show us in the later rounds was that he was still strong at the finish when Arcaris came alive somewhat, and Kilo was the better man, deserved the decision for the European crown. Keeps those elbows in real good to catch those body shots. Duran digging well to the body. Some more blood now from the cut on the right eyelid of Duran. Again, we'd like to alert our stations along the line. There'll be a 30-second station break following this round. Duran mixing it up to the body and the head. And Kilo using his bigger stature to continue to 
to lean on Duran, who scores again inside. He hurt Minkilo with that right hand uppercut, Tim. He has a little minute. bit wobbly. Under a minute to go in round five. Good left hand from Minkilo. But Duran comes right back. This is two consecutive right hands. Less than 30 seconds ago in the fifth round, he lands a left hook. Well, his manager said he's brave, and he certainly is brave. Then he's taking some good shots, and he punches right back. seconds of the fifth round. CBS Sports Saturday continues after this word from your local stations. All right, Cousin Nolan doing his job down there in Houston. Meanwhile, we're in round number six. Roberto Duran, Luigi Minkilo. A lot of people didn't think it would last this long. Tim Nolan Ryan may have pitched a no-hitter, but this sure isn't a no-hitter, I'll tell you that. They're both hitting. Again, some more work on that eyelid of Roberto Duran Left inside. Good hold. Good hold. Round number six of the scheduled ten rounder. Tim Ryan with Joe Clancy and Mills Lane, the referee, warning Minkilo for holding. Now, Minkilo is well schooled, and you notice when he gets hurt, he knows enough to hold on and walk the guy around. I think Tommy Hearns, uh, if he just would have grabbed a little bit more in that Leonard fight in certain spots, well, would have been a little better. That's a good better. point. Yes, indeed. Tommy Hearns had difficulty clinching. Didn't seem to know how to do it effectively. Well, he's never had a clinch before, Tommy. That's you know, right. He's always on the offense. <laughs> Exactly right. Duran boring in now and backing up Minkilo more than he has to this point in the fight. Come on, Luigi, can hold. Come on, let's go. Again, the warning to Minkilo for holding. The referee Mills Lane, who does not figure in the scoring. Three judges at ringside will do it on the 10-point must system here in Nevada. Duran has Minkilo backing up now, Tim. Good job of turning Duran around in his well-schooled fighter, Tim. He's a well-schooled fighter. His trainer, Elio Gelfi, runs a boxing club in Rimini, Italy. He's turned out many amateurs and professionals in that country. And he really makes him work watching him in the training sessions this week. Boy, I tell you, Gelfi runs a tough shot. It paid off, as you can see. Tim, I don't want to belabor a point, but Duran has landed an awful lot of clean punches, but again, he's hitting 154 pounder, and they just haven't had the same effect. Under a minute to go in the sixth round. Well, that's pretty much part of the story of the future of Roberto Duran, Gil. Should he be at 154? Well, in my opinion, has been, as I expected in the Gonzalez fight out again. He should fight at 147 pounds, but he has to have the discipline to bring himself down that far. 30 seconds to go in the sixth round. Nikilo is pulling him around the ring now. Final seconds of round number six. Round number seven, Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy. We are live from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, out of the tennis courts, the site of the Hearns Leonard fight. And today it is Roberto Duran on the right of your screen against the European champion Luigi Minkito. We are in round seven. And that is a surprise to most boxing observers, mainly because little was known about Minkito, the European champion, and even less about his opponents as he rolled up a 33 and 1 mark. But he has shown he has strong frame as his manager, Giovanni Branchini, described him. How do you see it at this point, Miguel? A pretty close fight. Yes, I go. I think it's a close fight, Tim. The fight is up for grabs right now. These next, last four rounds are going to be the critical rounds if it goes the last four. But these are the rounds right now, and right now it looks like Duran is starting to take over a little bit. Whether Minkilo will get a second win or whether Duran has already got his remains to be seen. But right now, Duran seems to be having things a little bit his own way. He's backing Minkilo up, looking for spots to throw those combinations. Minkilo is not as aggressive as he was in the early rounds. He gave Duran the last two rounds, five and six, and have him just well, a round ahead. 
Nikilo is trying to box now, Tim, and run and move. I don't know what that strategy is. He's only effective when he's brawling and moving forward. But I, maybe they want him to try to rest around, which I don't think is a good thing to ever tell a fighter. He's supposed to be in condition to go 10 at his own style, not to change it. Well, the heat and the dry desert air were something Minkilo has never faced before. First time over here. It was questioned about whether that would be a problem. His handlers thought the fight was going to be indoors. Of course, Duran from Panama, plenty used to the heat. We'll be watching to see if Minkilo is showing the effects of the heat in these later rounds. We're in round seven. Tim, not only the heat, but Duran has landed some wicked body shots uh, during the last couple of rounds. Again, the cut on the left eyelid of Duran has not been a problem since it occurred in round three, when it appeared it would be a very dangerous situation for him. Good combination by Duran, a good right hand landed. That rocked Min Kilo, and a straight right hand. Duran stalking him with under a minute to go in round seven. Come on, come on, come on, hold it, come on. Wait, hold it, come on. Solid right hand from Duran. Less than 30 seconds now in the seventh round. Nikilo looked at his corner, which means he's a little confused. Fighter shouldn't do that while the round is on. A little bit of blood from the nose of Nikilo again. We're in the final seconds of round seven. Round number eight, Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Roberto Duran at this, and his corner thought it was a tune-up, but if he thought it was a tune-up for Wilfred Benitez, he is certainly getting himself all the work he needs. Luigi Kilo on the right of your screen, Duran continues his body attack. However, as soon as the bell rang, Nikilo again started backing up, Tim. He can't fight going backwards. He has to stay right where he is right now, right face to face and wing punches. Durant, Durant can keep him back in the Left jab from Minkilo was met by a right, straight right hand from Durant. Backing up Minkilo, he lands a left hook to the cheekbone. The move by Durant was beautiful. He fainted the jab and then hooked off it. Very, very quick. Big difference from the Gonzalez fight is that he has rhythm and tempo and sharpness that was missing in that rusty display against Gonzalez after the layoff following the second Durant, the uh, second Leonard fight. But to, the opponent he's in with Nikilo is really making him work because he's aggressive at all times. Durant has to fight this kind of a fight or he couldn't win it. Yeah, he's had no chance when, to rest. That's when the champion, champion's heart comes out. Uppercut scored from Duran. From about round four, which we called even, time is called here. There's some tape on the glove of Minkilo that needs to be fastened down a little better, so there'll be a mid-round rest period for these two fighters as they repair it in the Minkilo corner, and here we go again. I like that. Minkilo ran right out and threw a right hand. Maybe he'll revert to that early round style he had. Another good right uppercut from Duran. And the left hook after it wasn't bad either, Tim. And Kilo backing up Duran. Started to say, having taken command from the fourth round on. Continuing that here in round eight, scheduled for ten. A minute to go in this eighth round. You know, we, we remarked in the Gonzalez fight that Duran was fighting himself into condition. He's doing the same thing here. He's much sharper now than he was in the earlier rounds. Which, uh, look at that fainting and, and putting those punches together. And again, credit to his corner for doing a good job on that cut. It has not been a factor since the round in which it occurred, round three. <laughs> Thirty seconds to go. If you're in the corner, round. though, Tim, you still get gray hair because one punch, any kind of a punch, a slap could still open that thing wide open. Duran with that familiar smile as he enjoys the combat. Perhaps more so than any other fighter still active today. Final seconds of the eighth round. Digging left to the body. Smiling again. He's in control. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy, round nine, scheduled for 10. 
the spectators in the searing sun of mid-afternoon in Las Vegas. The fighters, fortunately, in the shade, but the action's been hot and heavy through eight rounds. Duran, assuming control of this fight. As you mentioned, with this Las Vegas heat, the fact that the other guy's a big, strong, heavy guy, Duran has to be in shape to fight a fight at this pace and take control the way he has it in the later rounds. He has looked terrific in his workouts, and he's shown that he's fit today. That rope-jumping routine that he's been regaling the Caesars Palace fans with here is really a show. And any question about his weight, really not a factor in that. He just showed that at 154, he's... Very trim, very active, as we see the famous hotel out here in the desert. Here on the tennis courts, directly behind the double pool. Caesars. Duran digging a short left hand to the face of Menkilo. It's still coming forward here in this ninth round. Mikilo has not given up mentally, Tim. He's still in there trying, trying to turn it around. There he goes, bringing the right hand again. He has a brother here at ringside, Garino, came over from Italy with him. His wife and young daughter at home, and they're expecting another child. Now, that left eye of Mikilo starting to swell up some from the battering from Duran. Roberto's wife, Felicidad, is here, but not at ringside. She's watching on a television monitor inside. Tim, this has been Mikilo's best round in the last four. He's still trying. He's really trying. A lot of swelling over that left eye as it's starting to close on Mikilo. Under a minute to go. Round nine. Duran is really puffing, Tim. His mouth is open. He's gasping for breath, but he's got that heart. Nothing's going to deter him. Continuing obsession remains Sugar Ray Leonard, even though he has Wilfred Benitez and one more fight before that one on his schedule. He's got two more rounds to go Durant's against this very game Italian. Durant's cut is angry against him. It's opened up again, and he's bleeding again. That's him 30 seconds to go, and Kilo, who hasn't won any of the last four rounds as we have seen it, still has an opportunity with that cut. Final seconds. Ninth round. Touch him up. All right, Final go. round coming up. The fighters touch gloves. Duran on the left. Minkilo on the right. It has been a grueling battle. They had to work again on the cut on the right eyelid of Duran between rounds. The left eye of Minkilo. Swollen and half closed. Duran, as we see it, has taken control since the end of round four. But Minkilo has been game all the way. He has never given up, Tim. Never. He is the European champion, has lost only once in 34 professional fights. 20 knockouts to his credit. He just hit off the break and now apologizes to Duran. Now he may be a little afraid. He made Duran a little angry that time. Duran digging that uppercut effectively through much of this fight. Scoring again and again with it, left and right hand. He does it so beautifully, Tim. He just takes a little step over and puts three or four punches together. Just fluid motion. Again, the smiles and the confident look of the former champion. and final round from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Live here at CBS Sports Saturday and more great action next week. Boom Boom Mancini goes for the WBC lightweight crown against one of the truly great champions of our Alexis Arguello. Now holds his third title, three different weight divisions. Duran is trying to stop him. He's trying to get this fight over. He doesn't want it to go to a decision. It'll be a tall order against Minkilo, who has shown throughout he is every bit as strong as, as people from Italy claim. Under a minute to go in the fight. The 
Well, Tim Duran impressed me today. The only thing, as I say, he does not have the same effect of punching power as a 154-pounder. But he impressed me with his combinations and his conditioning. Good point, Gil. Uh, it does look like the money will be at 154 pounds, though, as time goes on with Hearns, probably Leonard moving up, although Leonard says for now he remains the sole welterweight champion of the world. Less than 30 seconds to go in the fight. But he is a formidable foe for anyone, Tim. Roberto Duran. Duran finishing on the attack. Final seconds of the fight. Palace comes to its feet in appreciation of a good, hard-working effort by both Duran and Minkilo, and certainly a somewhat surprising display by the European champion, as Roberto Duran, as we see it, uh, should come out the winner. That's up to three judges at ringside, but he certainly had his hands full, and uh, if he wanted a workout, Gil Clancy, he got one today. Oh, he certainly did. You talk about tightening up your belt. This, is a, this was a belt tightener. All right, let's uh, just take a brief time out from Las Vegas. Well, Tim Judge is up there to get the decision scores. and talk to Roberto Duran. 91. Judge Hal Miller scores 98, 92. And Judge Jerry Roth scores 190 for the winner by unanimous decision, Roberto Duran. Well, it is a unanimous decision for Roberto Duran, the second in a row, making his comeback try. And uh, let's talk to Roberto here. It's certainly uh, Luis Enriquez who will handle the interpreting for us. Luis, uh, would you ask him uh, if he expected this tough a fight against Midkiel, and nobody else did? Esperate una pelea tan fuerte como esta. La verdad no esperaba tan fuerte. Right, I did not expect this type of strong fight. Por eso que me preparé porque porque me, me hizo recordar a Nino González y todos quieren arrancarme la cabeza por eso porque me preparé mucho mejor que la primera vez. That's the reason why I train and I got in better shape because he remind me of the type of fight Nino González gave me. That's why everybody is trying to get to si my head. Si yo estoy así como está ahora yo no quedo a Nino González lo hubieran matado. I'm trying to be in my best shape. If I was in this condition, I would have knocked out Nino González too. Now he uh, suffered a bad cut in the third round. The corner did a good job repairing it. But when it occurred, was he worried? Did he think that he had to really turn it on? No, it didn't bother me. I'm a man. Anytime I am in that kind of situation, I know how to come back. Yo sé defenderme cuando estoy en problema. I know how to defend myself when I'm in problem. One question that must be raised, he's had two fights at 154 pounds. He doesn't seem to have the knockout power at this weight. Does he, is he sure that he is at the right weight or does he feel he would have more power at 147? Aparentemente, en esta división, 154 libras, según reportero, la pegada tuya no es tan fuerte. ¿Crees tú que esto puede ser una pelea, un peso que te moleste? No, no, al contrario, me estoy, me estoy enfrentando con gente más fuerte, pero la gente que pelea conmigo no, no presentan peleas, salen huyendo. On the contrary, the, I feel strong and I can hit, but the people that I'm fighting, they're not fighting me. They are running and not giving me a fight. I would like them to fight me. Well, I thought Menquilo fought him today. He, he gave him a pretty good workout, but nonetheless, a popular Roberto Duran with another victory here today. And uh, we, let's get a, a comment from Gil Clancy on his performance. Congratulations to you, Roberto Duran. Thank you. Okay, Gil, I know your feelings uh, run contrary to what Duran just said about the weight he's at and, and what, uh, whether or not he has the power at 154. He says, on the contrary, he feels that he has more power at this weight. Well, Tim, on the contrary, he said he has to get guys to fight him in order to hit them to knock them out. This guy certainly fought him, and he certainly hit the guy, and he didn't knock the guy out. So it remains a question mark, at least in the eyes of Gil Clancy, and I'm sure many other fight observers, as to whether or not the uh, awesome knockout power of Duran as a lightweight can be uh, recaptured or remain the same at 154 pounds. But he is an exciting fighter, and no doubt the tremendous interest he has created will uh, continue as we uh, watch his comeback bid and certainly uh, wait with anticipation his fight against Benitez. Right.